Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. An article posted on Bitcoin Magazine by Luke Mickick, a writer, podcast host and macro analyst stated his opinion on how the US will weaponize Bitcoin. This is a two-part article so we provided a short summary for you. The links will be in the description below. He wrote this dollar rally is causing havoc on the world's largest and most secure currencies. The yen, euro, and yuan are the three most important alternatives to the US dollar, and they are all rivals if the US loses its reserve currency position. However, the real pain is being felt in developing market currencies. Countries such as Turkey, Argentina, and Sri Lanka are all facing 80% plus inflation, demonstrating how the dollar wrecking ball disproportionately affects smaller countries. He continues, saying, This milkshake dynamic generates massive demand for US dollars outside of the US, allowing and even requiring the Fed to produce massive quantities of liquidity in order to supply the world with the dollars it needed to settle its obligations. If the Fed wants the global economy to run properly, it must simply supply the globe with dollars. This is an important point. It makes sense for the Fed to supply the globe with required cash in a globally interconnected society during peacetime. Since we've been on the petrodollar system for the past 50 years, there have been several cries for the dollar to die. However, the most dangerous periods for our financial system have occurred when there has been a scarcity of US dollars and the DXY has gained compared to other currencies. It's worth noting that this milkshake situation was always going to happen. The inherent instabilities in our financial system would have always expressed themselves in the domino effect of currency crashes explained by Brent Johnson. As a result, I predict that countries who embrace Bitcoin will be obliged to use the US dollar expressly as a unit of account. Countries that accept a Bitcoin standard will be a Trojan horse for the dollar's prolonged global supremacy. For the moment, let aside your thoughts on whether stablecoins are shitcoins. With recent advances, such as Taro introducing stablecoins to the Lightning Network, consider the prospect of swiftly and cheaply transporting stablecoins throughout the world. The Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland appears to be keeping an eye on these developments, since they just produced a study titled The Lightning Network, Turning Bitcoin into Money. Moving on to an article posted on the Bitcoinist.com, reads, Tech CEOs are less enthusiastic about the metaverse. Microsoft's Phil Spencer and Snap's Evan Spiegel aren't lovers of the metaverse. They exposed their lackadaisical attitude towards the metaverse at a Wall Street Journal event. Spencer describes the metaverse as badly made video games. Its terrible visuals and interface show this. Spencer praised the game world's various virtual realms over the metaverse. Most metaverse efforts were compared to virtual room gatherings. Microsoft's gaming head explained game makers' special skill. He also said their projects offer relaxing and entertaining universes. The boss said he wouldn't join metaverse ventures that resemble a conference room. Spiegel compared the encounters to computer life. He said metaverse iterations are in the early stages. After a hard day, such undertakings won't interest him. Spiegel said Snap has reduced its services hardware. Instead, it aims to target VR devices. This helps the project give a great augmented reality experience, AR. The virtual world is creating a real-life atmosphere to delight consumers. Augmented reality, AR, augments a real-world situation. VR requires a headset. AR is different. Greg Joswiak, Apple's SVP of marketing, said he'd never utilize the metaverse. His company favors AR over VR. Moving on to a few key updates on Ripple and XRP. Ripple's third quarter markets report revealed a significant drop in XRP tokens. The US based corporation refuted charges XRP is centralized, stating it controls less than 50 billion tokens, or 50% of the total supply. Critics say Ripple controls the XRP ledger because it owns XRP. False. Each validator node gets one vote regardless of how much XRP they own, according to the study. 
The outflows from Ripple's escrow wallets are a proof XRP has real utility, according to CEO Brad Garlinghouse. Also, the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit. Ripple discussed its legal battle with the SEC, SEC. The crypto payment startup earned a tactical triumph last week when it was allowed access to a treasure trove of emails and documents the agency had refused to turn over. Former SEC official William Hinman said in a 2018 speech that Ether, like Bitcoin, was sufficiently decentralized and not a security. Ripple argues that Hinman's comments contradict the SEC's claims that XRP is subject to federal securities laws and that the agency continues to deliberately create ambiguity instead of providing clear guidance, and uses that ambiguity to bring enforcement actions to stifle crypto innovation in the U.S. The case poses an existential danger to Ripple and the crypto sector. Ripple and the SEC will file reply briefs next month and await the court's verdict. Ripple has committed to defend this case to bring regulatory clarity to the U.S. crypto market. This statement was issued by Charles Hoskinson in response to a tweet wondering what will happen to Dogecoin following Elon Musk's acquisition of the social media network Twitter. Now that Twitter is in the hands of Elon Musk, I can see a real possibility that Doge will somehow merge with the platform. According to Hoskinson, there is a chance that Doge and Twitter will merge. When asked if the meme coin would be turned to a proof-of-stake network, he responded. Dogecoin should be a Cardano sidechain. I'd do the migration for free. Hell, I'd even add smart contracts. Since Elon Musk assumed ownership of Twitter, Dogecoin has risen by 44.3% over the past week and is currently trading at $0.085692. The Doge bull movement is predicated on expectations of what Musk will do with Dogecoin now that he controls Twitter. Here are some Ethereum passive income options. Staking. Staking locks funds on a POS blockchain, like Ethereum, to validate transactions and receive rewards. By staking ETH, users help secure the network. Staking prizes are ETH or other tokens. Ethereum staking is a popular strategy to earn passive income from cryptocurrencies, but it's expensive for beginners. The new POS version of Ethereum costs over $50,000 to host a full validator node and stake. Direct Ethereum Staking Stakewise and Lido are alternative staking services. These dApps allow Ethereum network participants to stake with small amounts without running a complete node. Using an Ether trading bot is another approach to create passive money from Ethereum. Automated trading bots buy and sell cryptocurrencies 24-7 using pre-programmed algorithms. Lending is another way ETH investors create passive income. Investors earn from high-interest crypto loans through centralized or decentralized lending networks. Users don't need to worry about security, data storage, bandwidth usage, or authentication on centralized platforms. The software manages technical intricacies and helps investors maximize yield. Ethereum can also be used for liquidity mining or yield farming. Here, people lend Ether or other assets to decentralized liquidity pools to gain rewards. Many yield farming platforms allow token trading in a liquidity pool. Traders pay a charge while trading cryptocurrency, and this amount is distributed among the pool's farmers. The payout relies on how much liquidity the farmer provides. Yield farming can create passive income, but it's a new technique and vulnerable to change. The price of the underlying assets might move quickly, causing losses. In an article posted on the block.co stated, Maker creator Rune Christensen was at the center of a governance vote to change how the DAI stablecoin issuer functions, but some detractors say he tipped the scales to pass the measure. MakerDAO passed Christensen's endgame plan on Monday, paving the way for a new governance architecture. Endgame will divide MakerDAO into MetaDAO's MakerDAO has several functional core units. The DAO oversees these units. Once deployed, MetaDAO's will change things. MetaDAO's will have separate governance structures. Each MetaDAO will have its own tokens and governance system. One MetaDAO will oversee Maker's real-world asset investments. 80% of Monday's voters supported Endgame. Christensen's influence was felt during voting. 
Over 70% of yes votes came from maker-affiliated voting blocs. This raises centralization concerns. Some DAO members opposed to the vote accused Christensen of organization capture when a special interest overrides the group's general interest, leading to a net loss. We oppose Rune's techniques, lengths, and attempts to affect the outcome of this vote and MakerDAO in the future. ACR Invest said, if there are any merits within this take-it-or-leave-it massive bundle of fundamental organization changes, even these are irreparably tainted when implemented in this manner. Monday's vote approved Endgame's pre-launch. The vision will be executed on the DAO in stages. While the DAO prepares to divide into smaller groups, core units must cluster to form their own meta-DAOs. Moving on to Ethereum and its fight against cancer. Swarm Learning for Decentralized Artificial Intelligence in Cancer Histology, a paper released in April by 27 authors, mentions Ethereum in a footnote. According to the article, Artificial Intelligence AI, can anticipate the appearance of malignant cells in patients by extracting information about cell shape and size. Large datasets needed to run AI systems confront practical, ethical, and legal problems, especially if shared between countries. Using Federated Learning FL, to address this issue doesn't need researchers to exchange data, simply locally trained AI model weights or parameters. Such systems rely on a centralized coordinator who integrates all model weights and controls the research project and commercial exploitation. Instead, the researchers pointed to Swarm Learning, SL, which uses blockchain technology to minimize centralization. SL allows teams to share AI model weights while keeping all participants on the same level, which makes cooperation easier and feeds AI models with additional data, strengthening them. The study team used Ethereum smart contracts to synchronize three computers' AI model weights at set times. All three partners updated AI models simultaneously without a coordinator to integrate parameters. The report demonstrated that AI systems born from the configuration outperformed locally trained AI models and performed on par with other models trained with merged datasets, and that the technique was more data-efficient. A hospital in New York can speak with one in Los Angeles through nodes, tweeted Ari Gold NFT. This is big for Bitcoin and smart contract systems. Critics and enthusiasts alike have criticized blockchain's lack of acceptance in other sectors. Vitalik Buterin said in August that crypto must become useful in 10 years. Medical is a great use case. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Thank you for watching if you made it all the way through. Stay tuned we are an active admin. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Never be afraid to voice your opinion, tell us in the comments what you think, and give us some suggestions on what kind of content you'd like us to deep dive into. Until next time, good day, good night, and goodbye.